This is the team of Island Air. Every day, they risk everything. The Kodiak Peaks and Wicked Seas make the island the world's most treacherous place to fly. These are the tales of Alaska's ultimate bush pilots. Off the coast of Alaska is one of the planet's most volatile landscapes. Kodiak, Alaska, the 3,500 square mile island is a vast wilderness. It's different than the lower 48. When we're flying areas that most people would look at and go, you're, you're going where? <laughs> you know, you're landing where? Bob Stanford and his team of pilots at Island Air face danger daily. Right straight to the west of us is a monster storm. I'm going to wait for tide change, but I'm just going to get the plane ready to go. A mix of wild weather and extreme isolation make bush planes the best way to access Kodiak Island. All right, well, I'm going to go get my plane ready and get this first one done. The pilots take hunters and thrill seekers up daily, but they are also a lifeline to people living on the island full time. We're going just to Uganic? For residents like Lance Parker, Island Air is their sole connection to civilization. Island Air is my hero. <laughs> As a trapper, Lance's season is short, and any mishap has grave consequences. I was just running my line. It's the last run of the season. I broke my propeller on a rock that I didn't see. I just limped in on the broken one, but it's a miserable go. Replacement parts can be hard to come by in this remote part of the world. Trying to stay ahead of the parts game is uh, its a challenge. You, you, you have to kind of build a confidence or knowledge of what are readily available and what aren't. Luck is on Lance's side today. They found another boat prop right in Kodiak. Island Air, one up fuel. Pilot Eric Howard picked up the part for Lance and will fly to Port Bailey, 26 miles northwest of Island Air, to deliver it. Around Kodiak here, everyone helps each other. Everyone's willing to drop what they're doing and help because everyone's been in that situation before themselves. Alaska may be the biggest state in the Union, but it's also the smallest state in the Union. We are dependent on each other. And we made it. A present-day necessity delivered. Thanks, Eric. We'll see you later. Eric's next mission focuses on the past. Morning, guys. Morning, Eric. Morning. Looks like we got some awesome weather to go uh, take a look around. Patrick and Natalie are from the Aludic Museum on Kodiak and are heading out to discover some of the island's archaeological treasures. Pretty much every survey we ever do on Kodiak, we use a float plane. You can't get there without a plane. They're looking for native Aludic villages that date back over 500 years. This is the Aludic history book, these sites. Eric is dropping the archaeologists off in the Shelikov Strait, a location that troubles the veteran pilot. When you're out on the Shelikov Strait, you have uh, really big tides, and uh, you almost always have winds and currents. When the threesome left island air, the skies looked clear. But on Kodiak, the weather changes drastically from one area to another. Oh, this is looking a little worse out here now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at the waves. They're too big. Yeah, pretty much any time you see white on the beach, it's pretty hard to get the float plane to it. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get on that beach today. Kills me we didn't get there. That was where I really wanted to go. High waves are posing problems for the archaeologists. But for another client at Island Air, the waves are a welcome sight. Good morning. Good morning. How are yes. you guys today? Good. How are you? Excellent. Ready to go um, surfing? Yes. Jen and Steve moved to Kodiak five years ago. Avid surfers, 
they didn't let the cold climate keep them from their favorite pastime. Today we're here at Island Air to try and get on a float plane and see if we can get to some new surf spots and some spots that haven't really been surfed by anyone before. Same storms that bring big waves to Hawaii in the winter, they originate up here off the coast of Alaska, so we'll get waves from those storms as well. The only thing is it's a lot colder here than uh, Hawaii or even California. You have to wear a thick wetsuit, whether it's uh, July or January, it's about the same. Get about two hours out there before my feet start getting completely numb. Ready to go. Peter will take the couple to Surfer's Beach, about 25 miles south of Island Air. The area is renowned for its colossal waves. Excited about this. It's the first time that we're flying on a float plane. We don't know what we're going to get in terms of waves and where they're going to leave us. So yeah, it's a little nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, there's some little line. Kind of a bumpy ride right now. <laughs> After a little bit of a rain shower. Kodiak's severe storms create massive waves, perfect for surfing, but they spell trouble for a float plane. It's gonna be pretty rough in here. It's definitely a pretty big swell, huh? Yeah. yeah. Kodiak Island's notoriously high seas are legendary. Most people try to avoid the ocean when the waves are rough. Today, Peter is taking a couple of surfers out to ride those waves. Kind of a bumpy ride right now. <laughs> After a little bit of a rain shower. Massive waves are exactly what surfers crave, but they're disastrous for a float plane. Landing on swells this size is tricky. It's gonna be pretty rough in here. Hey, kind of nervous. Just pounding all these rocks out here. With the uh, storm approaching, the swell is so big right now, we don't even know if a plane will be able to land in the spots we want to surf. We might be able to get on the water here um, with the plane. kind of in this back corner. We're protected from that swell. Beautiful. Here you go, guys. We'll get your boards out and kick you out. Sounds good. Awesome. Cool. And they're off. Yeah, we do a little bit differently here in Kodiak. We don't uh, tow you in surfing. We'll drop you in a float plane, though. So hope these guys have a good time. some sea lions out there while we were surfing. Sometimes they start at you. <laughs> We've even had whales come up to us before while we're surfing in Kodiak, so it's a, it's a really cool experience. Did you have fun? It was awesome. Yeah. All right. 40 miles northwest of Surfer's Beach, trapper Lance Parker isn't having fun. The boat prop Island Air delivered this morning doesn't fit his engine. Emily immediately tries to locate the correct part, but it's no easy task on Kodiak. Is Emily at Island Air? Oh, he's in Port Bailey. Oh, yikes. But with no luck. They locate the right part in Anchorage, but a storm there has grounded planes until tomorrow. For tonight, Lance is stranded on a cold beach. I, I worry about it all night. Weather is also posing a problem for Eric and the archaeologists he's transporting. Oh, this is looking a little worse out here now. Yeah. Eric is trying to land in the Shelikov Strait, but high winds have kicked up and the seas are too rough. Pretty much any time you see white on the beach, it's pretty hard to get the float plane to it. Oh yeah, look at the waves, they're too big. 
Yeah, I don't think we're going to get on that. There is another village site that hasn't been explored in a Fognac Bay. The shoreline is more protected there, so Eric might be able to land. Oh, look at this beach over here. That's one big village down there. Yeah, I think we can make it in there. All right, here we go, guys. Kodiak has an incredible number of sites. I mean, there's already 1,200 reported ones, and I like found 100 this year, so, and we're gonna probably find a few more today. And See it looks guys. like it's getting a little rough. Uh, a little bit of wind out there, but uh, we'll be back to get you. Okay. Bye. See you guys. Yep, thanks. Aha, look. <laughs> a house pit. You know, you have your thatched roof, fish hanging from the ceiling. There's probably some benches. Yeah, this is huge. Yeah, this is a pretty big one. This is probably a winter village. While Patrick and Natalie have been exploring, the wind speeds and swells have increased dramatically. A float plane pickup is now impossible. Yeah, it's not looking too good right now. All right. All right, thanks. Bye. I just got a call from Eric. Um, today, we won't be able to go pick up Patrick or Natalie. So I had to call Keller Waterman, and he has a plane that can actually land on beaches. They're gonna be a little surprised to see me. Keller is a freelance pilot who helps out Island Air in these kinds of situations. I love flying whales. Landed on beaches and remote, you know, river banks and tops of mountains, and it's completely different. Keller must make it to a fog neck quickly. The weather has turned, and high tide is approaching. If the beach floods, he won't be able to land, and the archaeologist will be stranded overnight with no shelter on an island full of 1,500-pound brown bears. There's still five, six-foot, pit-foot swells out there. Weather plays the lead role in Alaska's aviation world. It demands respect. If ignored, it can cost a pilot his life. I came to Alaska with a man named Jamie Madsen. He was my best friend. He had done a flight down the Alaska Peninsula. And he was refueled, and he was heading into Kodiak. And it was clear and calm here. Um, but over the range earlier that day, uh, there had been 50 knot easterly winds blowing. And he left King Salmon and obviously ran into icing. His very last words were, Mayday, 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 Twin Cessna, One Echo Charlie, losing control ice. I've been flying almost 40 years and I've never used the word Mayday. When you say that word, something very serious is happening. Bush pilot in Alaska is a gutsy decision. Over the last 10 years, 54 fatal plane crashes have occurred. Bob Stanford has lost close friends over the years he's been flying. One particular crash still haunts him. He left King Salmon and obviously ran into icing. His very last words were, Mayday, 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 Twin Cessna, One Echo Charlie, losing control ice. I've been flying almost 40 years, and I've never used the word mayday. When you say that word, something very serious is happening. And we looked for him for five days. It snowed five days for five straight days in the Katmai range uh, after he went down. We, we never have found him. I've been going over there for four decades, and I, every trip, I think about him. I still look for him. When you lose somebody close to you, you, you know, you realize it can happen to you. <sighs> you know, it's even after all these years, it still affects me. Alaska's plane crash fatalities are 20 times higher than the national rate. Reading the weather signals is crucial to survival in this dangerous business. 
behind the tide is, man. Pilot Keller Wadham is trying to interpret the tide. He's picking up archaeologists in a fog knack. But if the tide has flooded the beach, a landing will be impossible. With a dropping tide, you can't put the plane on the beach. So you got to kind of like look at it from up here and decide. That's the beach right there, though. Definitely get in there. It's a workable lagoon. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm picking you guys up today because Island Air couldn't get back with the Beaver. We're gonna go on wheels instead. Okay, I don't know if I've okay. ever done that. It sounds <laughs> sounds yeah. cool. It will be fun, so <laughs> let's get you guys loaded up and we'll be out of here. Okay. All right. Kodiak's tidal range is nearly 10 feet and high tide is hitting. Keller must get the plane airborne before the beach is completely submerged. Tide's coming up, so we have to go. Back up in this like beautiful flat valley up here. Yeah, this is awesome. Glad we got to get home a little early too. <laughs> With the archaeologists safely heading home, Island Air can now turn its attention to a new member of the family. A seven-month-old Labrador retriever puppy named Piper. Emily got a puppy that was uh, actually raised out uh, in the bush. Of course, she named it after an airplane, and <laughs> Piper's part of the family now. An adorable family member, but one who has broken the law. Piper has a criminal record. Piper has violated Kodiak's rarely enforced leash law. <laughs> I've watched uh, dogs run around down in the basin for my entire life here, and Piper's the first dog I've ever seen get a ticket from <laughs> from the dog police. When she's on leash with me, she hates it. She hates it a lot. And I don't know that I like it very much either. <laughs> Come on, Piper. Piper's exuberance is exhausting her owner. So the Island Air family has brainstormed a way to give Piper her freedom and Emily a break. Peter and Emily will take Piper to Uganic Bay. 35 miles west of Island Air. Come on, Piper. Oh, there you go. Thank you. All right, you guys ready to go? We are. <laughs> Get Piper. What up, girls? I'm on it. You want a glass light? Piper, you're fogging up my windows. <laughs> you're getting excited about that, huh? Are you having fun, Piper? <laughs> Piper's running free, and she's so happy. It makes me happy to see her this way. Overnight, the massive storm that grounded Anchorage's planes yesterday is now heading straight for Kodiak. Right straight to the west of us is a monster storm. You know, I called the weather servers. They're talking about 75 knot winds, 90 miles an hour. You know, we would definitely be batting down the hatches. 40 miles per hour is a no-go for our airplanes. More bad news for trapper Lance Parker who's been waiting for a replacement propeller for his boat. There aren't any planes making it into Kodiak. With flying on the island at a standstill, Lance will be forced to spend another night in the elements. After weathering a huge storm overnight, Island Air Basin, seven off kilo. Kodiak is flying again. Port Bailey, Island Air, be Lance Trolley. Eric can now make the flight to Port Bailey and deliver Lance's boat prop. Doesn't look too windy, looks pretty nice down there, so we're not gonna have any issue getting in there. And, uh, should make Lance pretty happy so he can get back on his plane. 
And I think we brought out a little bit of tobacco too, so that'll, uh, that'll make me happier. I, I didn't think they were going to make it, but son of a gun, they did make it. Eric showed up just like perfect, like Island Air always does. <laughs> that looks like the baby. Well, I got to get back. We'll see you next time. Good luck. You bet, man. All right. Thanks. Took the prop out of the box and seen that it fit and bolted it on. Now I'm ready to go home. I've got some traps to check on the way home that I'm going to pull out of the ground. And then that'll be the end of my season. To Bob Stanford, running Island Air isn't about money. It's about caring for the people of Kodiak. It's a rush. That's why I do it. It's awesome. It's, uh, you know, even at my age, at 59, it's just like being 21 without all the energy. So yeah, this is, this is why I've done this for 39 years. I love the challenge and passing that knowledge on, watching these guys. I'm proud of them. I can trust them, too. When I, when I put my head down at night, I know they've got the best drivers of these airplanes when people fly in our air service. I, uh, that's why our pilots are so uh, sought after. People try to hire them all the time from here. So. Yeah, these guys are awesome. They got it.